But first here on 4 Extra, the final chapter of The Man Born to be King by Dorothy L. Sayers, telling of the life and death of Jesus Christ. And the twelfth play takes us to the days immediately after the crucifixion. be king, a cycle of plays on the life of Jesus Christ. The twelfth play, The King Comes to His Own. Mary of Magdala? Yes, John. I know it's very early, but may I come in? Of course. My mother will be down in a moment. Tell me, Mary, how did you find them all at Bethany? Oh, with heart and spirit broken, but a little comforted to know that all of us here in Jerusalem were safe. Yes. They were dreadfully anxious, thinking you and Peter had been arrested and wondering what would happen to Salome, your mother, and to Mary Cleophas, and to the mother of our dear Lord. My sister Martha scolded me terribly for having run into danger, crying and kissing me all the time and breaking off every few minutes to fly to the kitchen and cook some little tempting dish or other to comfort us. <laughs> dear funny Martha. And then, when we couldn't eat, exclaiming that she was a a wicked woman and had broken the Sabbath for us all to no purpose. <laughs> and Matthew said, without thinking, don't you worry, the Sabbath was made for man and that just about finished us. I know. Familiar word, the echo of a laugh. It's like a stab in the heart. Yesterday I found a pair of old sandals moulded by the feet that wore them. We hid them from Peter. Peter is here with you? Like a sick animal that's crawled home to die. He can't eat, he can't sleep. He can't forgive himself. And it was my fault. I knew he was frightened, and yet I left him alone in the house of the high priest Annas. Poor Peter. He calls himself a worse traitor than... Judas. I can't speak the name. It's like poison in me. You heard what became of him. Yes, but... John, you can't hate him worse than he came to hate himself. If I hate him, I am his murderer too. But John, dear, you don't hate Judas, not really. You just don't understand his sin or, or his despair. He was too proud. I think it was harder for him than for people like Matthew and, and me and that poor robber on the cross. We know we're so awful anyhow that it's no good pretending we're not, even to ourselves. Blessed are the humble, and the wretched, and the poor. And the lost sheep, and the sinners. Yeah. You know, when the Master said that, he really meant it. So don't fret too much about Peter, either. He's not proud. He'll never go the way of Judas. Only don't be soft with him. He must face what he did, and... Learn to do better next time. What next time? Our master is dead. When you anointed him Mary in the house of Simon the leper, it was for his burial, as he said. And here come Mary Cleophas and my mother, bringing the spices they prepared. Mother, Mary Magdalene is here. Good morning, Mary, my dear. Good morning, Salome. Dear Salome. And God bless you, dear Mary Cleophas. And God bless you, Madeline. My sister-in-law, Mary, the mother of Jesus, sends you her love. Oh, how is she, poor lady? Uh, worn out with grief, but wonderfully brave and calm. 
She said she commended her son's body to our love, and she gave us this to take with us. But, Mary Cleophas, what is it? I never saw such a beautiful casket. Oh, the gold and, and jewels are fit for a king's treasure. Ah, it came from a king's treasure. It's King Balthazar's gift of myrrh that he brought to Jesus at Bethlehem. It has waited for him three and thirty years. It shall lie above his heart, where the soldier's spear smote him. I have brought aloes and cassia. And I have brought palm wine for the washing. Oh, thank you, Salome. And here are cloves and balm of Gilead. Thank you, dear Mary Cleophas. <laughs> we shall need a clean linen garment and fresh grave bands. But those are already at the sepulchre, Salome. You see, Joseph of Arimathea brought them and... We dressed our master in them and swathed the long cloths about him, bound his head with a fine napkin. The richest nobleman could have no better. Oh, are the gates of the city open yet? Mary, how did you get in? I made a little present to the watchman. He is expecting us and will let us out by the postern. Then we had best be starting. I don't like your going alone. Hadn't I better come too, Mother? No, John, dear. We shall be safer without you. Nobody will interfere with three women bound on an errand of mercy. Besides, this is a woman's business. I wish there was something I could do. I feel so helpless and hopeless. It's always so, my son. Men make a bustle in life. But women wind the swaddling bands and the grave bands for all of them. Come along, Mary of Magdala. I'm ready, sir. And Mary of Cleophas. Yes, dear. John, come and see us out. And bar the door after us. Yes, Mother. The moon's still up. You'll be able to find your way. And the sun will rise soon. It's close on cockcrow. Oh, cockcrow. That's a bad time with Peter. I must go up to him. That's right, John. Peter's your job. Do your best for him. I will, Mary. All's quiet. Not a soul in the street. Go quickly and God be with you. So, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, cometh Mary Magdalene to the sepulchre, with Mary Cleophas and Salome, the mother of James and John, bringing the spices that they had prepared. Salome, do you think this is the best way? Yes, dear. If we go this way, the back way, past the gardener's cottage. We shan't have to pass the crosses. And this way is really quicker. Just round here and along the wall. There ought to be a gate just about here. I found it. Ah, unguarded and open. Thank God for that. Shh. Don't let the latch kick back. Which way now? We go on till we come to the well in the middle of the garden. Oh, it's dark under these olive trees. I shall soon be through them. I don't think there's anyone about. If we hadn't been able to get into this garden, I should have died. So long as one can do something, it keeps one from thinking. At least we shall see our master's face again and kiss his feet for the last time. And remember when we are desolate that our love was with him to the end. Yes, dear. But later on... You'll find it easier to think of him as he used to be. That's God's merciful way. We forget the still body and the cold waxen face. And our dead are given back to our remembrance alive and happy. Here we are at the well. Now along this winding path to the eastwards. The tomb is cut from the living rock. With a tall cypress on either hand. And twining above the door... The Oh, Salome. Oh, what is it? I'd forgotten. The door is closed with a great stone. Who all rolled it away for us? Oh, dear, we should have brought John after all. It took four men to set it in place. I'm not going to turn back now. We might get help from the gardener. He's sure to be about soon, and if... There is the tomb. But look. 
The stone has been rolled away. Somebody's been before us. Are you sure it's the right tomb? How could I ever forget? There are the cypresses and the wild vine over the door. Perhaps Joseph of Arimathea. Of course. That's it. I'll run ahead and see. It should be Joseph. He wouldn't be expecting us to come. And he'd want to see things done properly. Yes. <laughs> Good man. I believe this was his own sepulchre that he prepared for himself. Mary! Salome! Hmm? He's gone! Gone? Who's gone? It's the master. There's no one there. Oh. The body's gone. He's oh. been stolen. Mary. They've taken him away. Where oh. is he? We must find him. Oh, oh Raboni, Raboni. What have they done with you? Mary, dear. No, no. Let me go. I must fetch John and Peter. Wait a moment, Mary. Raboni! Raboni! Raboni, oh, where no are you? You can't catch her. This is very strange, Salome. She's made a mistake. She can't have looked properly. Let us go and see for ourselves. Oh. Well, the tomb's been opened. That's certain. And the body's vanished. That's certain, too. Two robbers. Oh, no. That's too horrible. The master's body's stolen. What would his mother say? Oh. And John, oh, Mary, those two men there, in white. They don't seem like robbers. They seem more like... I'm afraid of them. There is nothing to be afraid of. Sirs, whether you be angels or men... Why look for the living among the dead? Alas, sirs, we were looking... I know. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, whom they crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. He is risen. As he said. Go now and tell his disciples and Peter that he has gone before them to lead them as of old into Galilee. Where are the others? Oh, for God's sake, what's happened? They've taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre. And we we don't know where they have laid him. Taken him away? Oh, do come quickly. Of course. At once. Uh, Peter, oh, run up and find him, Mary. Yes, I will, but run, John, run. Peter! <laughs> Elders of the Sanadrim, I have called you together at this early hour because there is something you ought to hear. Captain Elihu and these three Levites of the Temple Guard were on duty last night at the tomb of the Nazarene. Captain, kindly repeat to these gentlemen the report you made to me. Uh, we... Uh, we kept watch, two by two. And towards the first cockcrow, Joel and Saul were lying some thirty feet from the sepulchre with a brazier of coals between them, because the night was chilly. Abner and I stood leaning on our spears on either side of the door. You could see it clearly. The setting moon was over against us, and we had also a torch placed in a crescent on the ground about three paces distant. You hear that, gentlemen? Sure, yes, yes. Yes. I just said to Abner that it was time to change the guard when we felt the earth move under us. And one of the sleeping men woke up and cried out. There came another tremor, and another, still more violent. I put my hand to the door to steady myself, and my, my arm tingled to the shoulder as happens sometimes when you touch iron in a thunderstorm. And then suddenly... Go on, man, go on. We were flung apart with a great shock so that we fell to the ground. And the flame of the torch streamed out flat as though a wind had gone over it from the sepulchre. Some vapour of the earth discharged from a vent in the rock. Go on, man. Then I heard a pebble spin from the path as if a foot had struck it. And some thing passed between me and the brazier, blotting out the light of the fire. Had it form as well as substance? It went very swiftly, but the shadow that followed it was the shadow of a man. Did you lay hold of it? No, sir. This is a fine soldier to be frightened of his shadow. I was startled, sir, but not afraid. Then I heard a shout and saw Abner and Joel still lying on the ground with Saul running towards them. So I ran too and we lifted them up. They were not hurt, but their bodies were numb where the shock had struck them. And after that? We took up the torch and examined the stone and the seals. but found everything secure. And while we looked and wondered, 
Somebody laughed behind us. These men were drunk or dreaming. No, we turned about quickly and saw a young man. The same person or another? Another. Did you see him clearly? Yes, sir. Yes. He was tall and fair, dressed in a short tunic belted about the waist with sandals on his feet and his hair curled close and bound with a fillet. And he was smiling. In all my life, I never saw anything so terrible as that smiling face. Why was it terrible? I cannot tell, but we were as dead men for fear of it. It was not like that other. What do you mean? So the thing that passed us in the garden was human. But this was not. Did the apparition speak? No, sir. It went forward and stood before the sepulchre. The moon was behind it. It had cast no shadow on the face of the rock. Then, as though the great stone had weighed no more than a bubble, it rolled it back with one hand and sat upon it, smiling still. And the moonlight and the torchlight shone through the open door, and the tomb was empty. Empty! Peter! Peter, it's true. It's empty. Empty? There's nobody there. Nothing. Only the linen clothes lying on the grave slab. Where are the women? Heaven knows. Gone out by the other gate, perhaps. Go and look, Peter. Yes. The Lord's body is gone. Well, I'm going in to see you. Oh, master, master. Is it possible? This is the third day. No, I daren't say it. I daren't think it. John. There's something queer about this. The grave clothes are here. The grave clothes. What sort of robbers steal the body and leave the grave clothes behind? Wait, let me come. See there, where the body lay? The grave bands crisscrossed and wound together from breast to foot. And the napkin, not tossed with the rest, but look, wrapped up by itself. Just where his head must have been. Who can have arranged them like that? And in heaven's name, why? Nobody. Nobody. Can't you see? They've never been unwound. Never unwound? You're mad. How could the body have passed? He is risen. He is risen! Then the disciples went away again into their own home. But Mary Magdalene returned to the sepulchre and stood without weeping. <laughs> Woman, what are you crying for? Because they have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have laid him. Oh, sir, what has become of him? Are you the gardener? I, I beg you, if you have hidden him, if he must not lie here in your garden, tell me where you have put him, and I will come and take him away. Please, please, I beseech you. Mary. Rapone. Oh. Don't hold me. Don't oh. cling to me. I've not yet gone to the fur. Jesus. Go. Run to my brothers and say to them, Soon now, I shall be going home to my father and to your father, and to my God and your God. Joseph of Arimathea, do you mean to stand there and tell the chief priests and the elders... As God is my witness, I had no hand in it. 
I am as much amazed as you are. That's a likely story. You had access to the body. The sepulcher was yours. You sealed the stone yourselves and set the guard. Yes, and you bribed him. How dare you? You were a follower of Jesus. You have taken his part throughout. Backed up his seditious and treasonable attempt. That is a lie. I said he was a prophet. And the Messiah. I remember you did speak of him as that. How would stealing his body prove him to be the Messiah? You have condoned his blasphemy. No. And now, you stage this fictitious miracle to bring the law into contempt. I deny that. And insult the all-holy with the filthy and abominable pretense. Pretense of what? Of what? Prophets do not rise from the dead. Messiahs do not walk out of their graves. Of what are you accusing me? When did I ever say that Jesus was the Son of God? Reverend brothers, I think nothing is to be gained by accusations which cannot be substantiated. Yes, sir. And you, Joseph of Arimathea, if you are wise, you will fall in with our policy. And what is our policy, most venerable? Can you ask? Naturally, we shall deny the story. The weakness of our position, of course, is that we cannot produce the body. We shall leave no stone unturned. That was not too happily phrased, Brother Nicodemus. But in case it should prove undiscoverable... Undiscoverable? It must be somewhere. I said, in case. Can't we just reseal the tomb and pretend that nothing has happened? In a public garden in broad daylight? And suppose Pontius Pilate should hear rumours and order the tomb to be examined? Why not substitute another corpse? Having first crucified it, I suppose, by way of lending verisimilitude, it would be simpler to stick to the truth. The truth being... Really, Brother Shadrach, the body was stolen, of course. Unless anybody disagrees. Well, I... No? No. No. Oh. Then we must deal at once with these Levites of the Temple Guard. Clark... Excellent. Ask Captain Elihu to step this way. Yes, excellent. Incidentally, gentlemen, pray note that this discussion has not taken place. No record of it will appear in the minutes. There will be a trifling disbursement from the temple funds to be accounted for. It had better perhaps be debited to educational purposes. Ah, Captain Elihu. Most venerable. We are inclined to believe that your report was made in good faith. Needless to say, we cannot accept the supernatural interpretation you seem disposed to put upon it. Oh, my lord. I... We suggest that the earthquake, the thundery state of the weather, produced some kind of vaporous exhalation which stupefied you all, and that the disciples of the Nazarene profited by this to open the tomb and remove the body. Oh, my lord, I can only say... Let us say nothing. We have taken a lenient view. Yes, my lord. To avoid misunderstanding by the ignorant and superstitious, it would be advisable for you to admit, if questioned, that you fell asleep at your post. Oh, Lord, that would be a most dishonorable admission. It will prevent the drawing of other and still more damaging conclusions. In view of the shock and nervous wear and tear sustained in the performance of your duty, we are willing to pay you something extra. Oh, thank you, my Lord. On condition, of course, that you refrain... From gossip. Uh, excuse me, my lord. Crucified bodies are Roman property. If this should come to the Roman governor's ears... You shall not suffer. We will make it right with him. Now, you quite understand. Yes, most venerable. Very good. You may go. Thank you, Lord Caiaphas. Reverend brothers, the Sanhedrin is adjourned. <laughs> Joseph of Arimathea. One moment. Yes, most venerable. I mentioned no name to those Levites. I said the disciples of the Nazarene. I hope it will not be necessary to suggest names, but I shall make a general order that anyone spreading malicious rumors is to be put under arrest. Is that clear? Perfectly. Caiaphas. Mm. As man to man. What do you think you have done? The best I could for Israel. Then the same day, being the first day of the week, the disciples were assembled in Jerusalem with the doors barred for fear of the Jews. 
I should like better evidence of what you're telling me, John. Yes, Mr. Yes. Yes. Mary Magdalene's very excitable. She's she's worked herself up into such a state that and she's... our mother, James, the most practical prosaic person that ever walked, and Mary Cleophas. Yes, but what did they see? Two people in white who might have been anybody. But after all, they're women. Now, if you and Peter had seen... But no man has seen anything. Peter has seen something? What? What's that, Andrew? I went upstairs to see Peter, and I found him stretched on the floor. Right. He said, the Lord is alive. I've seen him. I said, what, here? And he said, yes. Well, I said, well, what did, what did he say to you? And Peter said, don't ask me. So I laid him on his bed, and he fell into a deep sleep, like a child. He's asleep now. Thomas is sitting with him. It, it was a vision, maybe, or, or, or a dream. Our Lord is dead. Yes, mm. Philip, I said that too. God forgive me. Yet did we not see the widow's son raised up and Lazarus called from the grave? And what did our Lord say to you at that last Passover supper? He died nevertheless, oh. didn't he, Matthew? Well, I don't know. I'd like to believe you, John. Well, if I thought he was alive, I'd be that happy I wouldn't know what to do with myself. All the same. He has two people sees angels, and Mary and Peter say that they've seen the master. But you ain't seen nothing. I saw the grave clothes. Granted. That's not what I mean. If it was really our master, same as we knew him, who'd he go to first? What? You, of course, John. You was the one he loved. He loved us all, Matthew. I know he did. But not quite the same way. You was his best friend. And God knows when they killed him, it must have hit you harder than any of us. Yeah. And if he was here, alive, the very first thing he'd say would be, Where's John? He knows I'm here whenever he wants me. Yes, 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 but it's not kind. God. It's not like him. Why should Mary and Peter come before you? Perhaps they needed him more. Needed him more? Needed to see him, I mean. I know he's alive. I knew it the minute I got there. I was certain... Yes, that's all very well. But what are we to do? You know there's an order gone out that anybody who repeats this resurrection story will be put in prison. Matthew. And in view of that... Oh, what's that? Temple police. Oh, Temple police. They come. I'll, um... I'll see who it is. Take care, careful. Who's there? Cleophas and Mary. Oh. Well, wait a minute. Uh, we, we thought you were the police. Oh, no. <laughs> James! <laughs> John! Everybody! We've seen the master. What? Oh, James, first of all, uh, bar the door. Yes. My wife and I were walking home to Emmaus, you know, our own village about seven miles out, yes. and discussing all these strange events when a man came up with w us. Where from? Wife, where did he come from? Oh, from behind, I suppose, or out of a side turning. He just seemed to be there. He asked what we were talking about and why we seemed so sad about it. So I said, are you a stranger in Jerusalem that you don't know the things that have been happening there? He said, what things? About Jesus of Nazareth, I said. The chief priests and the Roman officials condemned him to death and crucified him three days ago. And now I said, some of the women who were with us astonished us this morning by saying that they'd seen a vision of angels who told them he was alive. Oh, Cleophas, that was awfully risky. The man might have been a spy. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think of that, Andrew. Well, anyway, he said, how foolish you are and how slow to believe what the prophets told you. Don't you see that the Messiah had to suffer all these things and so enter into his glory? Well, when we got to Emmaus, the sun was set, so we said, Come in and stay with us, for night is falling. And he came in, and I got supper ready, and we all sat down. Then he took the bread, and blessed, and broke it. And as he held it out to us, we saw his hands. And the marks of the nails were in the... Oh, yes. oh. And we looked at his face, and knew him. It was as if we'd been blind all the time. Just in a flash, it came to us. And then he was gone. There was nothing there but the bread lying broken upon the table. Oh, oh, perhaps you imagined it all, eh? Oh, it, 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 it was an a apparition. Yes, a sort of a vision. But the bread was broken. And I said, Husband, didn't our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road? Because, looking back on it, 
the voice and the things he said. We seem to have known him all along. So we ran back all the way to Jerusalem to tell you. It's true, you see. After all, yes. 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 it's frightening. That's what it is. Uncanny. That's not the master we knew. Appearing like that and vanishing and you not recognising him. It's, it's a phantom. How do we know it, it isn't an evil spirit? Yes. I don't like it. Supposing it was to come in on us now. Peace be unto you. Ah, oh, oh, oh. Oh, it's here. Heaven is your Have mercy upon us. Children, you. what are you afraid of? Why do you doubt, John? Oh, my dear Lord. Oh, forgive us for being so stupid. You startled us coming in like that so suddenly through the locked door. We thought you were a ghost. Dear Lord, it is really you. Feel me and see. Take my hand. Your hand? You see and you can feel that I am alive. Yes. All of you. You are alive. Oh, Master. Master, it's wonderful to have you back. It seems too good to be true. Oh, Master and our friend. Dear, dear Lord Jesus. I should like something to eat. What have you in the house? Uh, well, uh, there's, um, there's some broiled fish left from supper uh, and bread, of course. That will do well. Come and, come and sit down, won't you? Thank you, James. What? <laughs> Just like old times, isn't it? <laughs> like old times, Matthew. Here's a piece of honeycomb. Oh. New and unbroken. Oh, delicious. So glad honeycomb. Honeycomb. Oh, thank you. Philip. Mm. Thank you. Master. Mm. Yes, John? You, you're not going to leave us yet. Why should I leave you? Cleophas and Mary here say you didn't eat like this with them. Oh, no, didn't I, Cleophas and Mary? No. Oh, Master, stay a little. Only a few minutes longer. Do you know me, John Barzebedee? I know you. I trust you. Stay or go as you will, Lord. Your will is ours. Oh, oh it's good to see you eat. <laughs> it's so real. Master, where have you been these three days? With the souls in prison. Did they know you? Are you there, Master, too? I am the Good Shepherd. I know my sheep and am known by them. All of them. From the beginning of the world and forever. before the Roman governor's door. What is it? With the carriages and the liquors? Yeah. Is Pontius Pilate leaving Jerusalem? Does his lady go with him? Claudia Broccoli, I mean. Yes, if you wait here, you'll see them start. Quick, quick, the doors are opening. They're coming out of the palace. Make way for their excellencies. Room for the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate. Room for the lady, Claudia Broccula. Are you sure you feel strong enough for the journey? Yes, Pontius, I'm quite well. I'm glad to be leaving Jerusalem. So am I, but Pollux, I've always hated the place. Hey, Flavius? A detestable hole, pilot. Your carriage, Your Excellency. Thank you, Flavius. Take my hand, my dear. Madame, wait a minute. Don't go. Madame. What's this? What's this? Come, girl, you mustn't trouble her, Excellency. Why, it's my little friend Eunice, the masses at the baths. I must say goodbye to her. Are these lovely flowers for me? Yes, madame. Oh, thank you, you nicey. That's sweet of you. Oh, madame, have you heard what they are saying in the city? No, what? Madame, the Nazarene is risen from the dead. After these things, Jesus showed himself again at the Sea of Galilee. There were together Simon Peter and Andrew, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We go also with thee. They went forth and entered into a boat immediately, 
But that night they caught nothing. Still no fish in the nets, Peter, and the dawn's breaking. Uh, no good, James. The weather looked right, and I hoped for a catch. Well, that's all there is to it. We'd best make for home. Yeah. Yeah. Look! What is it, Andrew? There's a man standing on the beach. Look, John. Mm, yes. Perhaps he wants to be taken across. I'll turn the boat and we'll put into shore. Have you had a good haul? No, sir. No luck, I'm afraid. Cast on the right side of the boat. There's a shoal there. What's he know about it? Well, no harm in trying, James. Come on, Andrew, get the net down. Yeah. Turn your helm, John. Uh, That's it. Now, the net's all of you. <coughs> Over. <sighs> hey, up there. Hey, out. Let her run. Wake up, John. Keep her before the wind. Hey, look out, lads. Haul away. Haul. Haul again. Oh. Oh. The net's full. There was a shoal, as the man on the beach said. Yes. It is the Lord. The Lord? Oh, yes. Of course. Here, take my coat. I'm going to swim ashore. Yeah, Peter, I say... Let him go, Andrew. We can see to the net. Come on, Andrew, give a hand. Oh! And again. Oh, oh it's uh, too heavy to get in. Yes. we better heave to and tow the net in. Come on. Yeah. Now, make for the shore. Uh, uh, hard right. ahead. Steady as she goes. Here we go. Beach her! Look, John, there's a fire of coals with fish laid on it and bread. He's busy with that. Oh, I wish I could see his face. Peter sits there watching. The boat is in. Bring some of the fish that you've caught. Andrew! Have you brought the trawl? Yes, tied to the stern of the dinghy. Well, find me one of the best. John, are we to go with him? Let us stay here and count the fish. They are big ones. Do you think we dare ask him who he is? Fishers of men, come and have breakfast. The sun has risen. Do you see now who it is? And after forty days, Jesus led his disciples unto the Mount of Olives, and there he spoke unto them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and on earth. For thus it was written that Christ should suffer and rise from the dead. And you are witnesses of these things. Stay therefore in Jerusalem till you receive the promised power from on high. Then go and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And while he blessed them, he was parted from them. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which said to them, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up into heaven, shall so come in like manner, as ye have seen him go into heaven. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus.
These things are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. King comes to his own, completes the cycle of plays on the life of Jesus Christ, the man born to be king. That was the final play from The Man Born to be King by Dorothy L. Sayers, in which you heard Gabriel Wolfe, John Westbrook, Heron Carvick, Malcolm Hayes, John Wise, Harrison Culfe, Trader Faulkner, Alec Clunes, Mary Wimbush, Mary Law, Hensie Rayburn, Molly Rankin, Keith Alexander, Stephen Jack, John Glenn, John Boxer, Rolf Lefebvre, Nigel Stock, Harry Hutchinson and Elizabeth Morgan. It was dramatised and produced by Raymond Riggs.